in what instant might do you play more of a managerial role and not just a pure booking agent role? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I, I think I think more often than I think. <laughs> Um, the, but well, I should be more specific. So our, some of the artists we represent have managers, some of them do not. So obviously that dynamic okay. is more prevalent where the artist does not have a manager. You know, I, I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna shoot myself in the foot, but I do feel like sometimes more often than not, we can be, we can, I feel like we can be more successful for the artists if they actually do not have a manager. Because not because we uh, would not because we theoretically are great managers because obviously we're booking agents, but because I've found artists at a certain level who are self-managed, um, they don't need a traditional manager, and and that I think that's a shift that's happened, you know, probably the last 10, 15 years or whatever, um, where you know somebody wakes up one day and realizes they don't need to pay somebody to book their travel, right? which kind of gets back to what we were talking about earlier, this management is really, really difficult. So a lot of times I get asked the question, how do I know when I need a manager? How do I know when I need a booking agent? And unless it's super obvious that your workload um, as, a, as a musician is, is just, you can't keep up with the sheer amount of demand, right? My answer all, uh, now is you should invest in someone who actually knows how to do really good marketing. Don't even worry about a manager um, or a booking agent. But like find, either learn it yourself or find somebody who knows how to help take your content and um, use platforms as they need to be used and create really amazing looking videos. And obviously the music has to sound good too. Because I, I always make this analogy that you would never book an Airbnb whose pictures looked atrocious, <laughs> right? And so if you're not as an artist able to translate the music into um, beautiful visual or whatever across digital platforms, what does that say about how you're going to come across on stage? The idea of money spent wisely when needed is really sound advice. Right. Because, yeah, it, especially because there are now, as you say, so many things that musicians can do by themselves without help or even the idea I you know I think more people are also offering sort of consulting services whether it's for getting your publishing stuff in order or right. whether it's for career strategizing and trying to get to the next rung of the ladder so even that you know a small sharp sharp, sharp shock of paying somebody for a very specific consulting period and then right. seeing if you can gather tools from that and to what degree you can further your yeah. agenda. I mean, it's interesting because it's so obvious, but it, it feels like the industry, the traditional aspects of the industry are still kind of catching up to where technology is. And that's not necessarily the fault of the industry. It's because technology is increasing so quickly and it's, it's constantly changing. But it, it, I mean, it sounds obvious to say, but I, uh, the truth is people will always hear your music um, digitally before they would ever experience it in person. It's so rare that, that like from my own, in my own experience, it's very rare that I would see an artist live um, for the first time, right? And had not already heard something online or seen a video online. And that is so rare. I mean, maybe at a big festival where there's specifically a stage for new artists that could happen. But yeah, it, it just, the nature of things being all digital is such that people experience your music digitally, virtually, however you want to describe it, before it's live, before they are there at the show.